Thank you.
I'm glad I'm real close.
what have been your impressions? Uh, first of all, you've been to America before. Uh, what are your impressions of America today and this area of the country? My impressions today are very special. For the first time, I have come to a, a farmer now. Before, I uh, was only in the cities. The cities, I did know the green area. Now, now it is green American farms, but it's, it's for me something very impressionable. In general, in my coming to the United States, okay. it is caused by the interesting comments of Philadelphia this year. Uh, I am not only myself here by public delegation of what is the status of the Catholic Church? got to hold it down at the feet. Uh, Polish Poland is before, above all, a Catholic. A Catholic governed by communists. That is a, a deep distinction. And we must always, obs always observe this essential distinction for the Polish people, the Polish nation, is Catholic 90 percent. What kind of restrictions are put on the people there? Is it different than here in this country? <laughs> Your what, question what is uh, ridiculous. <laughs> or you don't know the situation, the political situation in Europe. Well, what is some of the ah, we must study that. <laughs> that is not to and for me to, to give the answer you, it is your duty to, to understand the situation. <laughs> it is the historical situation, the political situation of the world. Our country is necessary to do you know that. At, uh, but it is about all a country. Poland is Polish people. This country during a thousand years in the union. And the remains Catholic also in this new situation created by the, by the, by the last uh, world war. And uh, uh, the church in Poland is deeply connected with the, with the nation. With the nation. But not with the government. But government is government. And the people is the people. And the church is living, is living in the people, not the government. There's a resurgence of religion in Russia itself. Is that true, do you think? At least I Russia. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a serious situation in Russia. I suppose that the Russian is also religious. Of course, it is a difference for the Polish people. It's Catholic. And the Russian people is Orthodox. Tsarskaya, 
Is there any relief 
from the harassment of the government when it comes to building churches and repairing churches? Uh, it is a, a big problem now in our country, especially the building of, of the churches in the new sections, cities, dust cities, dust sections. That is a very important problem. And uh, it is not so easy to, to get a permission for, for this building. For this building. But if we uh, get the permissions, that is always the, the attitude of the people, of the believers, of the working people, if we this answer to this world, also that is very important. And that is also a argument that the church is living in the people, in the nation. This is the, the, the fundamental reason, this is the fundamental connection between the people and the church. You're saying that the people and force the government to give the permission to that course, not only that. If the situation of the church in Poland is as is here, as it is now, it is all a fruit of the energy of the people. Your Eminence, only one uh, question, uh, gentlemen, only one question still. Uh, if you have a question. That is a special experience. The I saw a building, but all this, 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 connection. this, connection. this connection. I, I hope that this, connection is fundamental also in the, in the side of the gospel. Yes. Our Lord said, go and all the people, all the nations, all nations, even all nations, it is our mission. It is the only visit of this group of uh, bishops who came to this country recently with the rural population. And then we have, of course, a program in Krakow, and uh, this program will be more meaningful. Then we have, of course, here in Wisconsin about 40 graduates of higher education in Poland who spent one year or less in this section of the country learning American methods of farming. And they also will return to Poland with this conviction that the interest of the American people is, of course, broader and includes all aspects of the land. And therefore, it is a very fine but uh, certainly you are welcome then to ask anybody of us. Uh, <laughs> 
thank you. How about uh, oh, your enemies? I don't know, this is Charlie Adams. God, we ask thy blessing upon this crowd, upon this gathering. Bless us in this food that we are to consume from thy goodness and bounty. Panie Boże, by błogosław nas, te dary, które w swojej dobrowodliwości spożywać mamy w imię Ojca i Syna i Ducha Świętego. Amen. Your Eminence, Your Excellency, Right Reverend Fathers, Reverend Fathers, Venerated Sisters, Honorable Papal Knights, and Knights of Columbus, Distinguished Guests at the Head Table, Members and Friends of our Organization, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am happy and proud that I can extend my warmest welcome to all of you on behalf of annual lectures on Poland. Your support of today's program appears to be great and nothing can be done without the support of the whole community. Therefore, I thank you for this splendid support. We are happy and proud and honored that we have His Eminence Cardinal Carol Wojtyla among us as our most distinguished guest. Although his generous acceptance of our invitation has become his generous gift for this region, there is strong justification for his decision. How fitting to formally initiate our organization approximately 12 miles from our banquet hall where the Poles first settled in the Polonia area in 1957. Polonia, as you know, is the second oldest Polish settlement in the United States. Panna Maria, Texas, was the first settlement. Descendants of the first settlement at Panna Maria, known as the Kielbasa family, settled in the Russell area, where now we have the site of the beautiful Wisconsin Lions Camp at Rosselt, and at that place there is a lake known formerly as Kilbasa Lake. We fully realize that we welcome in person of our eminent guest an outstanding member of the Supreme Board of the Catholic Church, the College of Cardinals for whom the faith is the supreme motivation. But we also realize that Cardinal Carol Wojtyla is an illustrious representative of this valiant Polish nation, the nation of our forefathers of many of us, the nation which has existed for over a thousand years as a member of the Christian Europe, often as a strong threshold of Christianity. While honoring him, among us, we pay tribute to the whole delegation of Polish bishops who have come from Poland to this country. The Eucharistic Congress and are visiting with Americans of Polish origin and with other people of this country. We pay tribute to the whole Polish nation which is so splendidly working and fighting for the preservation of its own way of life, its heritage and its historical values of its Western culture which has achieved so much in rebuilding that nation from destruction and ruins of the last world war. We pay tribute to Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski, primate of Poland, and a great spiritual leader of the church in Poland. His closest collaborator has been his eminence, Colonel Wojtyla, the second oldest Polish cardinal, the oldest in office, and the youngest in his age. May he live to be a hundred years.
we welcome our eminent guest in central Wisconsin, and we join all other centers of Americans of Polish origin who voice their concern for Poland. We, Americans of Polish origin, and this entire country of ours, the United States of America, are sensitive to what is going on in Poland. This country of ours, and particularly Americans of Polish origin, never turn back to that country which has been fighting for its freedom on the confines of the Christian civilization for over 1,000 years. We are conscious that the Polish nation is living under the regime of one party without opposition, and we are extremely sensitive to anything that jeopardizes traditional values and the own way of life in Poland. Finally, we are proud to officially inaugurate annual lectures on Poland. There is a need for more knowledge on all aspects of Poland. This is a need not only for Americans of Polish origin, but first of all, for all other Americans and the whole society of the United States. The rich heritage of over 10 million people in this country is a necessary ingredient in the American heritage. As a member of the annual lectures in Poland, it is my sincere hope in this bicentennial year to bring to Stevens Point in the future outstanding scholars whose lectures will be recorded for later use at any university, high school, grade school, and for the reading public. It is my highest hope to attain this goal through unending prayer, unending work and ardent prayer. For without work and prayer, nothing that exists can succeed. Now I should like, now I should like to introduce to you our master of ceremonies. He was born, raised, and educated in this region. His forefathers came to this country from Poland in the 1870s. Presently, he is a high school teacher at Rosselt, teaching English and French languages. He has shown outstanding ability and devotion in many parish activities at St. Peter's Parish in Stevens Point. At this time, I'd like to present to you Mr. Roy Szafranski. Most often we do have trouble with speaking systems in a hall of this type. Can uh, all of you hear me okay back there? Okay, good. Mary Jane, thank you so much for that beautiful and flattering introduction. It's like the thousand dollars a man paid for a very rare dog, which was uh, part schnauzer and part bull. A friend then asked him, what part was schnauzer and what part was bull? And he answered the part about the thousand dollars of which he paid for the dog. Uh, be that as it may, uh, Mary Jane was busy finding some biographical information about my family, which I didn't think she knew. But uh, granted, I, I think we can all take pride in the heritage that we have to come together this evening to celebrate this great occasion in the presence of uh, Cardinal Wojtyla. And at this time, we will make introductions at the uh, head table, and uh, we will start from the center and working uh, to your left. Uh, we have, of course, uh, our eminent uh, guest and speaker for this program, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church in Poland, His Eminence Cardinal Karol Wojtyla.
next we have uh, Mr. Maynard Drake, who is a member of the annual lectures on Poland and who happens to be the distinguished spouse of our president. And uh, Maynard's profession in life is a farmer, and he's the only farmer I know of that if he intends to loaf, he gets up on time to get an early start. Maynard. <laughs> Next in line, we have our uh, beloved and friendly Bishop of the Diocese of La Crosse, Bishop Frederick Frecking. Next, of course, in line, we have uh, Mrs. Mary Jane Drake, the president of the annual lectures on Poland series. Uh, she uh, is not only the wife of a farmer, but she is also a mother, a teacher also in home economics, and a host of other involvements in the Portage County area. Mary Jane. Next, we have uh, Mr. John Jonas and his wife, uh, Marion, who uh, John happens to be the chairman of the board of Century Insurance, Mr. and Mrs. Jonas. <laughs> Next in line, we have Father John Novak, who is the uh, Portage County Dean of Priests, as well as the pastor of St. Adelbert's Parish in Rochelt, Father John. <laughs> Next we have uh, Mrs. and uh, Mr. Gerald Skalski. Uh, Gerald is one of the Grand Marshals of this event. He is a member of St. Stanislaus Parish uh, parish, excuse me, and uh, very much involved in community activities in the area. Mr. and Mrs. Skalski. <laughs> Working now to the right of uh, Cardinal Wojtyla, we have the Chancellor of our university here at Stevens Point and his wife, uh, Joyce. And if people don't remember, the Chancellor's name, they remember his red vest. <laughs> Chancellor and Mrs. Draper. <laughs> Next we have a professor at Orchard Lake Seminary and College from Orchard Lake, Michigan, Monsignor Mieczysław Peszkowski. Monsignor. <laughs> Our next two distinguished guests are Mayor Fiegelson and his wife, Claire. <laughs> next, we have uh, Father Stephen Mieczkowski, who is the senior ranking member of the clergy here in Portage County, also a chaplain of over 25 years of service with the American Legion, Father Mieczkowski. Last but not least, we have a representative from the Felician Sisters, uh, Sister Pancia, who is the principal of Sacred Heart School in Polonia, the first birthplace of Polish heritage in Portage County. Sister Pancia. <laughs> At this time, then, to keep the program going, it is appropriate that we call on Dr. Lee Sherman Dreyfus to give the uh, welcome address uh, here from the university and whose facilities we are taking share in. Dr. Dreyfus. I wish to welcome you all 
And in looking over the titles, I, Your Eminence, Your Excellence, Your Honor, and I got thinking about Joyce, so I suppose your grandmotherliness. <laughs> Sedichne Vitami. <laughs> Your Eminence, you are most welcome and certainly the most eminent citizen from Krakow to Stevens Point. In fact, with your presence and your color, you give added meaning now to my vest. <laughs> But there are three special significances to your presence here tonight. First, the founding of this community dated 1858 is also the year in which Kozichkovsky arrived in central Wisconsin and began the Polish community, essentially Kashub people who are here and are the basic strength of what this community is all about. I would also say that again, we have a problem, uh, I don't know how we do this uh, at the university, but since potato is such a basic part of the economy of central Wisconsin, here we have another evening meal without a potato on the plate. <laughs> and if I know the Okres and Louis Wysocki and the Zedroiks, this is going to cost me. <laughs> A second significance and reason for welcoming you, Your Eminence, is our own branch of this university at Krakow, at the Jagiellonian University. We hope that you can carry our regards back to Rector Karash, and our students are on their way uh, for the second year at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point branch at Jagiellonian in Krakow. And the third special significance is this bicentennial year. 200 years of a free, loving society. And clearly, Poland stands out as the beacon of people who have sought and striven for freedom in that part of the world, as no other people around them have done in any sense. And as you lent to us, General Kuziusko, who did return to help establish freedom and democracy in the late 18th century, though it was only five years in length, but you left here on our soil in Savannah, Georgia, a young Polish Count, Kazimierz Pulaski, who also helped to bring about the freedom that are enjoyed by all the people in this room tonight, and a freedom which is not enjoyed in most parts of the world. And so on our 200th anniversary, will all of us as Americans derive from those Polish Americans who helped in the beginning and are now numbering approximately 5% of all Americans with some blood flowing in their veins of Polish heritage. And the university would like to have you carry our seal with you, and I shall bring it to you. But it is a very small exchange, this seal of the university, to give you in return for your great gift to us tonight, the gift of your presence. Thank you, Dr. Dreyfus, for your enlightening remarks and your uh, concern for the opportunities for students from this university to have a second home, at least for a semester, in uh, Krakow. Our second welcome address is delivered by Dr. Arthur L. Herman, who here at the university is professor of philosophy and acting chairman of the Department of Philosophy. Dr. Herman. Your Eminence, ladies and gentlemen, and friends of Poland, speakers of Polish and speakers of English, uh, I've reminded standing outside uh, the banquet room to this evening just how many different kinds of languages there are that bind people together in a situation like this. And I suppose one could say that 
Cardinal's presence here is one more indication of just how strong those rather encouragements are that tend to bring people together more and more. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome a fellow colleague, since uh, His Eminence teaches uh, moral theology and social philosophy, to this university. Strong ties have existed between uh, Polish and non-Polish philosophers, as uh, those of you who know the works of Jan Łukasiewicz and Alfred, Tar Alfred Tarski can uh, well attest. Uh, two of Poland's greatest philosophers, in my estimation, have indeed been Łukasiewicz and Tarski. So officially, Your Eminence, may I extend to you the greetings and felicitations of the philosophy department, this university, and I hope your stay in our city and at our university will be a pleasant one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Herman. Along with the introductions to the head table, we have in the audience, I think, a countless number of people who could stand up and be recognized. I happen to have a, a listing of only a few that I was requested to have people stand after I call their names. And again, this is always a difficult part of the program because so many people go working on in the background and unfortunately everybody cannot be mentioned. And I hope you beg our indulgence on this, that uh, there will be parts in the program later on for other uh, extensions of thanks to all those who made this gathering possible. Uh, Mr. Skowski was introduced as the Grand Marshal of this affair and he was assisted by David Shafransky, I guess I know him, <laughs> David and uh, Chet Brilusky, uh, Judge Robert Jenkins, and these are just a few of others who have helped us along. Again in the audience we have uh, Mrs. and Dr. Elwin Sigmund. Are you somewhere where you can raise your hand at least so the people can see you? Okay, way to your left. All right, and then a uh, former professor here at the uh, university who now happens to be a president of a college in New York, uh, Dr. Kurt Schmeller and his wife, Beata. Are they? Okay, fine. And we have The members of the Knights of Columbus, those who are here, Mr. and Mrs. John Sullivan. Uh, John, I believe, is president of the Sarah Club and who has given this organization great backing. Very good. And we have Assemblymen Leonard Groshek and his wife, Mrs. Groshek. We have a Mrs. and Dr. Burdett Egan, a dean and our very good friend, who has shown outstanding ability in his office. Dr. and Mrs. Egan. The next person has a, a very great association with the annual lecture in Poland, or on Poland series. Uh, the person who is in charge of, of seeing that our students at the university uh, get to their out-of-country campuses, uh, Dr. Pauline Isaacson, Director of Foreign Programs for our student in Krakow, our students, <laughs> Dr. Isaacson. We have uh, Mrs. and Judge James H. Levi. Uh, Judge Levi is a papal knight of the Holy Sepulchre. And we also have Mr. Carl N. Jacobs, Honorable Knight of Malta. This is, in some cases, a religious gathering 
And it's always amazing uh, to look in the audience to find out how many children there are. Of course, an affair like this, I suppose, isn't conducive to children coming, but I, we're all familiar with their plights of education in the religious world. If they belong to a CCD class or if they go to a Catholic day school sponsored by the church. But uh, children are, are rather apprehensive, and they look up to their elders as models by which to follow. It happened one Sunday, a wealthy man had taken his young son to church. The topic of the sermon was, what is heaven like? The priest went on to say, some people think that heaven is a fancy car and two television sets, that is, two color television sets. The boy sheepishly nudged his father and said, gee, Dad, we made it. <laughs> At a dinner also, um, uh, President Dreyfus uh, made the comment uh, about not having uh, potatoes on the menu. Uh, parents, too, are rather fussy about the manners that their children have. And uh, this is the story of a lady who was teaching her children manners so they'd know how to behave uh, in public. And the preliminary instructions began at home. And uh, as the mother was trying to get the ketchup out of the bottle to put the finishing touches on a sandwich, her little son, Mark, heard the doorbell ring, and he ran to answer the door. As he did, he opened the door, and the stranger said, is your mommy home? Yes, he replied. She's in the kitchen, hitting the bottle. <laughs> We have next on our program a man who has done a great deal of uh, promotion, involvement in the successful realization of this affair we are having today. He, uh, by the way, is mentioned, if you haven't read it, those of you in the area, Tonight's Point Journal gives a beautiful editorial on Cardinal Voitila's visit, and several notable people are mentioned in that editorial. So I, I think this is really a feather in the cap of this organization. Dr. Vatswav Soroka and Olinka, would you give them a round of applause, please, at this time for their fine work? Dr. Soroka is a professor of history here at the university. Dr. Soroka. Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Your Eminence, Your Excellency, the most reverent and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The best introduction is the shortest one, uh, particularly when somebody to be introduced is so distinguished and worldwide known. And yet, it would be a grave omission and a serious loss of opportunity if we would not concentrate for a brief period of time on those aspects of the occasion and of the life and accomplishments of our distinguished and eminent guest, which might deepen our perspectives projecting on our daily life. And the first statement in this respect would be that we host His Eminence Cardinal Karol Wojtyla, Archbishop of Krakow. Krakow, the capital of Poland up to the end of the 16th century the sea of one of the oldest universities in Eastern and Central Europe from 1364. Krakow, the sea of uh, famous centers of thought, political and ideological, where president of the university was Stanislav Zeskalmierza 
or Pavel Vlotkovic, who suggested in the conflicts of the time between uh, the people who wanted to spread Christianity by force, by sword and fire, and between those who wanted to spread Christianity by charity. They stood clearly on the side of charity, and they uh, represented this type of movement and thought which animated this nation for centuries. We, of course, see a representative of this nation, uh, which provides us with enormous resources for enrichment of our own American, Polish American heritage. We necessarily have to state uh, that Americans of Polish origin are at some disadvantage in uh, providing their values as an element of the growing civilization of the United States. Most of them came to this country without proper education. Most of them did not carry with them uh, uh, knowledge and a possibility to spread this knowledge among the people of this country. Most of them came to this country 100 years ago hardly with anything they had, the cross and perhaps the prayer book, and then the determination to dig stones and to build this civilization. And unfortunately, still, in the process of developing this country, this country has not accepted fully this heritage which is represented by the people of uh, this country of Polish origin, if we look at this heritage from the historical perspective. Fortunately, uh, this country which is intensively developing is now in the period of search for identification, ethnic and national identification, and we definitely can realize uh, that on one side we have, of course, this long-lasting, 1,000 years uh, lasting heritage, national heritage, which should be known to us, and not only known to us, but also incorporated in textbooks, in materials which are used in the educative process. And on another side, we have this heritage of 100 years, this heritage which we admired today, which added quite a lot to the civilization of this region and which added quite a lot to the civilization of this country as well. And while welcoming and uh, while just thinking a moment in this introduction of our distinguished speaker, we have to realize two elements of this heritage. And both of them should be better known, of course, in this country. I should like to suggest uh, that uh, uh, we welcome a distinguished guest speaker. This distinguished guest speaker is a representative of the church, consecrated at 26 years of age, bishop at 38, archbishop at Metropolitan of Krakow at 43, cardinal at 47. With this pace of promotion, <laughs> One does not know when he will end. <laughs> I should like to suggest uh, that uh, uh, we welcome a distinguished uh, guest speaker. This distinguished guest speaker is a representative of the church consecrated at 26 years of age, bishop at 38, archbishop at Metropolitan of Krakow at 43, cardinal at 47. With this pace of promotion, <laughs> one does not know when he will end. <laughs> And in those years, and behind those promotions, there is full creative devotion to matters of faith. This was represented in his contribution to the Council, Vatican Council. It is represented in his work in various 
important congregations, and I, I unfortunately am not able to enumerate some of them, which would be definitely to our interest. Uh, he participated and participates in the Conference of Bishops. Uh, he is and has been friend and supporter of Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński, Primate of Poland. And the position of Primate of Poland historically is a little different than the position of a president of Bishops' Conference in the United States. In history, Primate in Poland was Viceroy. In the period of Interregnum, when there was no ruler, Primate of Poland devised the direction for the nation. Primate of Poland is this center of orientation and guidance, which is extremely important in times of crisis. And it is hard to believe uh, to the people of this country, uh, but Eastern and Central Europe is in time of very deep crisis. I would say that we welcome a social activist, a man whose knowledge and sensitivity sensitiveness uh, to social problems is outstanding. Cardinal Wojtyla, when was, uh, he was a student in Rome, uh, started to, s to continue the study of uh, uh, the Christian uh, uh, movement of uh, young people, uh, uh, Jeunesse Ouvrière Catholique. And uh, Cardinal Wojtyla grew in the atmosphere of struggle for social justice. And it's not without reason that he just delivered a conference uh, at the Congress, uh, Eucharist, Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia, Eucharist and the Social Justice. I should like to suggest what Dr. Herman emphasized, uh, that the third element which we should notice uh, in the uh, introduction of our guest speaker is uh, his scholarship. He won, earned his doctorate in 1948. Uh, he studied and prepared his thesis on the problem of faith according to St. John of Cross. I know that quite a lot of uh, members of this distinguished assembly uh, just uh, recognize uh, this interest of the church. Uh, which appeared in the recent times. For instance, the Serra Club studied uh, uh, the Dwyer's conference, which was concentrating on, uh, uh, of course, uh, St. John of Cross. The second major uh, uh, thesis, uh, the habilitation thesis, was the evaluation of possibilities to build Christian ethics on the basis of the system of Max Scheller. Very interesting for uh, all groups of people, secular and not secular, religiously minded and not religiously minded. Whoever thinks this concern of modern world for ethics, which would be just a constructive force for the society which sometimes is collapsing without ethics, realizes that the perspectives of the scholarly interest of the cardinal are uh, very broad. Uh, Cardinal uh, Wojtyla published various studies. Uh, he became professor of Metropolitan Seminary in Krakow, uh, then of the Catholic University of Lublin, which I like to emphasize because it is uh, uh, my, uh, uh, of course, university also. And it is the only Catholic university from the Elbe River up to Japan. And it is good if people of free countries would remember that such a university exists, it is not supported by the government, and it works enormously, and it helps, of course, uh, the church and human values, which are, uh, of course, uh, even broader uh, than uh, an interpretation of such values. We are fortunate, of course, uh, to, uh, to welcome a man who represents some kind of experience which also is perhaps foreign to many of this audience, namely uh, that part of the world passed through terrible crises, when the dignity of man, of human being, collapsed and was submitted to the authority of state once, to uh, the one nation which was considered as the highest value, and in the name of this nation, it was possible to massacre 2,500 
priests in Poland in concentration camps during the Nazi occupation. Colonel Wojtyla was on special lists of SS. They were looking for him. But at the same time, he passed through difficult uh, experience, which also is foreign to you, namely that instead of a nation and of a state, a party has been placed as the highest value. And in the name of this party also, the human values are degraded and are stepped upon and the human values also are submitted to uh, the decisions uh, which, uh, of course, represent the same crisis. I would say, therefore, uh, that we are fortunate and we have to think about this experience in order to draw, of course, uh, conclusions from this type of, of encounter. We are fortunate and exceptionally honored to have such a lecturer among us and this is my distinct privilege, pleasure and honor to introduce to you His Eminence Karol Cardinal Wojtyla, who will speak on uh, the uh, intellectual work of the, in the Catholic Church in Poland. Cardinal, His Eminence Cardinal Karol Wojtyla. I suppose that these applauses could be better after my lecture. <laughs> uh, I am sure that my office, ecclesiastical office, is much more eminent as my English. <laughs> but uh, I suppose also that uh, all distinguished guests of this lecture are also very indulgent. Uh, the first, I express my gratitude to the persons who spoke before me, and I express a special gratitude for, the, for this commemorative sign of the University of Wisconsin, Stephen Points. Thank you very much. Mr. Chancellor, as the subject of my lecture, I choose the theme Catholic Learning in Poland Today. I begin with the first point, some introductory informations. I am happy to take up within the context of today's meeting the topic Catholic learning in Poland. Since the subject is in many respects very close to my heart, after studies in Krakow and Rome, I did postdoctoral work in the School of Theology at the Jagiellonian University in 1953. I was, and still am, connected with the philosophy department of the Catholic University of Lublin, but because of many episcopal obligations, I no longer am directly involved in super supervising scholarly work there in the area of ethics, especially of anthropology. On the other hand, I am chairman of the Episcopal Commission for Catholic Learning, as well as chairman of the Educational Council of the Polish Episcopate. Each of these, these bodies has as its aim concern for the development of Catholic learning 
although each in a somewhat different way. The Commission is a working and service organ in relation to the Episcopal Conference in matters of Catholic learning in Poland with particular consideration for, for institutions of higher learning of an academic character and also of major seminaries. On the other hand, the Educational Council, composed of the most competent profes professors and individuals in the field of Catholic learning, is above all a consultative organ. Frequently, it functions as an ecclesiastical commission for accreditation as well as recognizing the degrees of autonomous specialist in foro ecclesiastico. In our situation, the existence of such an instrument is particularly important. The activity of the Commission for Catholic Learning and of the Episcopal Educational Council in Poland is recognized but by the Apostolic See, that is, by the Congregation Pro Institutione Cattolica, of which I am also a member. The affairs of Catholic academic institutions are of particular concern for this congregation as recent documents give testimony, along with meetings of the congregation with representatives of universities and Catholic departments, that is, of academic institutions, as well as the preparation of a new constitution reg regulating their activity. A final word in this introduction is reserved for the organization which bears the title FUC, Fédération Internationale des Universités Catholiques, the International Federation for the Catholic Universities. For our Polish academic institutions are also related with it. And several months ago, a meeting of the Presidium of FUC was held in Lublin as well as a separate meeting of the rectors of European Catholic institutions. So much for my introduction. Second point, a historical overview of institutions and structures of Catholic learning in Poland. At, I, would, I would like now to present some historical information which will at the same time lead us into the assets of contemporary Catholic learning in Poland since it is a matter of institutions which serve it. A recently published multi-volumed work edited by Bishop Rechowicz professor and former rector of the Catholic University of Lublin under the title Historia Theologii w Polsce, the History of Theology in Poland, points out all the facts and events in the field of Catholic learning in our country which preceded the founding of the first Polish university in Kraków. 1364, as well as the first school of theology at that, uni at, at that university, 1397. The first work generally considered to have been written by Paul is Chronica Polonorum of blessed Vincenty Kadlubek, Bishop of Kraków, my predecessor. And later, I am the 76th. And later, a monk 
at the Cistercian Abbey in Jędrzejów, died 1222. The founding of the Kraków University and in turn the theology faculty was undoubtedly a decisive factor for the further development of Catholic learning in Poland. And now, leaping over many centuries, I wish to state that the network of academic institutions which Poland and the Church in Poland possessed after gaining independence in 1918 was to a large extent inherited from the period of the pre-partitions of Poland in 18th century. It suffices to state that in addition to the oldest school of theology at the Jagiellonian University in Kraków, a theology department likewise existed at the Stefan Batory University in Vilno. Also, at the John Casimir University in Lwów, as well as one at the University of Warsaw. The most important event, however, was the founding in Poland of the Catholic University of Lublin, and this precisely at the moment of the gaining of state independence in 1918. All these institutions have their own identity and history in the period between the First and Second World Wars. The theology department at the Jagiellonian University has a unique one it contributed to the renewed foundation of Polish culture, Polish consciousness, among the Polish priests from dioceses, which were previously within the sphere of the three partitioning powers, Russia, Germany, and Austria. The period of the Second World War and the horrible occupation brought with it the closing of all institutions, all universities, all seminaries, the arrest of professors, their transfer to concentration camps, a bloody blow of several years duration to the assets of the Polish clergy and of Polish theology together with the entire nation and Polish culture. At the same time, the period of occupation brought with it a particular effort in the direction of ensuring the continuity of learning and of a university education in the form of underground studies. I myself was a student of the theology department at, at the underground Jagiellonian University during the occupation. Taking two and one half years of such studies and working at the same time as industry worker, after the conclusion of the Second World War, the theology departments in Vilno and Lwów found themselves outside the boundaries of the Polish state. The theology departments of the Jagiellonian University in Kraków and the University of Warsaw 
began their activity immediately in 1945. And earlier than they, already in the fall of 1944, the Catholic University of Lublin. In 1954, the state authorities liquidated the theology departments in the state universities at Kraków and Warsaw, creating at the same time, independently without any coordination with the Holy See, with the Apostolic See, for only to her does this matter belong, a new state institution under the name of the Academy of Catholic Theology in Warsaw. Because of these circumstances, this institution is without canonical foundation. But the Archbishop of Warsaw, it is Cardinal Wyszyński, received from the Apostolic See special power to canonically sanction degrees awarded by the Academy. The liquidation of the theology department in Krakow placed this large area in a difficult situation. It is the largest in Poland and the highest number of students of theology is still in Krakow. In order to circumvent this difficult situation, the Apostolic See issued a decree on the strength of which the ancient Krakowian School of Theology, founded already in 1397, thanks to the efforts of the blessed Queen Jadwiga, exists hitherto in the ecclesiastical sense, and this is as the Papal Theology School, Papal Theology School, remaining exclusively under the authority of the Church. The question of the Krakowian Department is a continually lively one for both the clergy of and the Catholic Society of Kraków as well as the entire episcopate approach to the state authorities for the reparation of the wrong committed by the liquidation of the deserving school of theology of the Jagiellonian University. The question of the Krakowian Department of Theology became likewise the point of departure for new enterprises in the field of Catholic learning on the part of the Conference of the Polish Episcopate. For if during the interwar period the Church in Poland had five academic institutions for the education of the clergy, so in the present situation it needs at least this same number of centers for this purpose. For this reason, in addition to Lublin, Warsaw, and Kraków, such centers were organized in Wroclaw and in Poznań. In Wroclaw, the theology department was active at the university during the Prussian partition. In Poznań, we had the old school of Lubrański. A plan was prepared for a theology department at the State University of Adam Mickiewicz after the gaining of independence in 1918. But the creation of this department did not come to realization. Presently, it functions as a purely ecclesiastical institution. As a result, Five, five Catholic academic centers exist in Poland, but not all, all with the accordance of the state. Lublin 
with the Catholic University, Warsaw, with the State Academy of Catholic Theology. We also have in Warsaw the parallel Christian Theological, Theological Academy, as well as the Papal School, Schools of Theology in Kraków, Wrocław, and Poznań. A similar school of theology under the name Academic uh, Theological Stadium exists likewise in Warsaw, independently of the Academy of Catholic Theology. It is recognized by the Apostolic See as an ecclesiastical continuation of the theology department of the University of Warsaw. So in Warsaw, the situation is the most complicated. Our major seminaries are in contact with these centers. According to the plan coordinated with the Congregation of the Holy See, Pro Institutione Cattolica, the major seminaries enter into agreements for scholarly cooperation with these academic ecclesiastical institutions. These arrangements make possible the acquisition of basic academic degrees, Master of Theology, by the graduates of our major seminaries under specified conditions. The, commissions, the Commission for Catholic Learning oversees these affairs. Uh, I must add that the number of seminaries in Poland corresponds more or less to the number of dioceses. Even the small diocese of Drohicin, the rest of Pinsk, has its own seminary. Only the, at the rest of the archdiocese of Lwów doesn't have in Lubaczu. The seminaries or religious orders and of male congregations constitute a second group. group. The total number of seminaries for the education and formation of the clergy is approximately 60. A special task is the formation and theological education of sisters. It is also accomplished by some special institutes. For instance, in Krakow, the Higher Institute for Catechetic Formation of Sisters, connected with the theological school, the, the School of Theology in Krakow. Many seminaries stand very high in the field of learning. Among the professors, there are at least several so-called autonomous scholars, docent, that is, those having undergone postdoctoral post -doctoral work. Some seminaries have a magnificent publication record. Professors and lecturers who work in the mentioned institutions work in disciplines peculiar to the particular institution. These educators belong to special association or section of learning. These sections have scholarly conferences at least once a year. Some biblical scholars, for example, organize their own congresses. Once every five years, a Congress of Polish Theology is held. One will be held in Kraków in September of this year. I must return quickly to be there. The theme of this Congress is Theology, the Study of God. In 1971, the Congress uh, held in Lublin considered the topic theology and anthropology. In 1966, Polish millennium, 
The Congress also in Lublin considered the influence at, of Vatican II on theology. From a review of the activity of sections and the study of various publications, one can see a definite characteristic of contemporary Catholic learning in Poland. I will deal, for example, with three fields which are developing very intensively, perhaps more so than during the interwar period. These are history, philosophy, and biblical studies. When I speak of history as a field of Catholic learning, I have in mind primarily the history of the church in Poland, which is at one at the, and the same time a big chapter in the history of the Polish nation and of the Polish state. In this field, we have many works, research, projects, publications, and group initiatives, as for example, the Institute of the Historical Geography of the Church in Poland at the Catholic University of Lublin. We have monographs and works which represent syntheses. Our scholars also took part in last, last year's World Congress of Historians at San Francisco. This development of the interest and of the achievements of Catholic learning in the field of history has its basic justification in the fact that history is a need of a people when it finds itself living in difficult and critical periods. In such periods, Poles come to an understanding of their identity on the basis of their past. This is grounded in the specific national instinct, which does not allow for the approbation of a single falsification of own history, but which very resolutely seeks truth in this domain. This explains why a, great, why a great need exists in the history of the Polish nation for the history of the church. A distinct problem for historians became in the last years the question of the so-called regained territories both Western and Northern, namely Wrocław, Szczecin, Gdańsk, and Warmia. Uh, I must note that the ecclesiastical structures on these lands are Polish in their origin. Suffice it to say that the Bishop See of Wrocław belonged to the Metropolitan of Gniezno from 1000 to 1821. The second field, which takes on a particular meaning against the background of the contemporary worldwide situation, is philosophy. Marxism is the official philosophy of the present Polish government. Polish philosophical traditions of the last century, in particular, are characterized on the one hand by a tie with positivism, the Lwów Warsaw School, and on the other with phenomenology, whose representative of the highest class was Roman in Garden, Lwów Kraków. Catholic philosophy develops in relationship to all these trends. It has its own traditional Aristotelian Thomistic profile. Added to it are the, are the 
methodological aspects of the school of Polish log logicians, such as Lukasiewicz, Tarski, and Idukiewicz. Polish Catholic philosophy also takes much from phenomenolo phenomenology. We, we observe all these orientations in Lublin, such professors as Kamiński, Krompiec, Stempień, Styczeń, in Krakow, such as Jaworski, Stuzewski, Tischner. Now one cannot speak of a formal dialogue with Marxism. A formal dialogue doesn't exist. One can note in the writings of Polish Catholic philosophers a systematic handling of problems posed by Marxist philosophy, a pointing out of gaps and a presentation of solutions, such names of Kul, Professor Kusak, Slipko. Such a route leads to a deeper justification of the truth of the Catholic worldview. Philosophy plays a basic role here, whence its development and vitality. A special word deserves to be said about the research and discoveries in the field of the history of philosophy, especially Polish medieval philosophy. Research began during the interwar period by such scholars as the famous Konstanty Michalski and uh, has found uh, such successors as Professor Świerzawski and others. Polish theology has strong ties with the speculative tradition of the Western theology. For instance, Professor Ruzycki. It is also very sensitive to the currents of reinterpretation. It seems, however, that Polish theology manifests great reserve against so many Western publications and a correct relationship to the teaching of the church, to the magisterium. A good sense. Deserving special attention is the great development of biblical studies. Perhaps never before did Poland have so many biblical scholars as now, <clears throat> and so many who underwent a reliable European schooling in biblical studies. This is apparent in many publications and in some kind of systematic process of biblifying entire theological learning. Biblical scholars of the Polish millennium translated the Holy Scriptures into Polish from the original languages. This is known as the Biblia Tyniecka, the Bible of Tyniec, Jankowski Romaniu Kudasiewicz. The edition house, edition house of Palotinum in Poznań publishes introductions and commentaries to the individual books of the Bible. All that has been said about the state uh, of contemporary Catholic learning in Poland in a way exhausts the topic. It is barely an attempt to point out certain, perhaps very characteristic, features. Point four, concluding characteristics. A Catholic learning in Poland, as, and as has been said, seen, is a reality, and in no way a remnant. It is an authentic continuity of previous phases of development. It also attempts to be part of the current of the contemporary life of the church and of the life of its own society. It has at its disposal a certain core and workshop. 
One cannot say that this current workshop is adequate, but it is there. We are doing all we can to prevent ourselves from becoming marginal. We are doing all we can to prevent the further reduction of necessary needs. And such tendencies exist. They flow, flow out of the assumptions of an atheistic system according to which religion in the new government ought to disappear. And if religion, then also theology and Catholic learning in general. The church from the nature of things must oppose these tendencies. This explains the postulate of the five main academic centers mentioned before. Catholic learning in Poland, like all Catholic culture, demands the rights of citizenship in the life of our own society. It does not want to be some kind of a marginal phenomenon. It does not want to be confined to circles of professionals only, that is, of the clergy. Now, the church in Poland looks upon the education of the clergy as fundamental. The church also considers the academic status of clergy a fundamental issue. That means social rights Flowing, uh, flowing out of completed higher studies, academic studies. Catholic learning in Poland also asks that it be allowed to have a real influence on the form of the entire present and future Polish culture. And here, our call and our workshop is decidedly uns insufficient. The one and only department of humanities, and this is numerically a meager mean one, is at the Catholic University of Lublin. We need more departments of secular studies. Even the old department of social sciences at the Catholic University of Lublin was liquidated after 1945. This is a very serious problem. It is a matter of forming a Catholic intelligentsia. We do the best we can through pastoral work among students and the university as well as among the university and professional intelligentsia. This is hardly a direct method. Another lack we feel in the field of Catholic learning in Poland is the insufficient opportunity to be now outside of Poland. The works of non-Polish theologians and philosophers are known to Poles, but Polish theology and philosophy is very little known outside Poland. A foreign, foreign market is not necessary for the development of, the sci of these sciences in Poland, but it is nevertheless a lack. I think that the Polish-American community could help in this respect. The aim of learning is the solid cognition of truths in every field. Catholic learning through the realization of this aim serves to deepen the human and Christian consciousness. The attainment of this aim is dependent of didactics on teaching, on the transmission of knowledge. The church in Poland is doing all it can to fulfill this function at various levels. In this paper, I have concentrated, above all, on learning at the university level. The problem of teaching is greater. It embraces 
the elementary and junior high levels, it also embraces uh, in some kind of sense the post-university period, the education of adults. Under this aspect, the core and the workshop of learning and of Catholic teaching is decidedly insufficient. It is not commensurate with the needs and the rights of Catholic society in Poland, which constitutes more than 90% of the citizens. Schools at all levels are almost entirely state schools. They were fully secularized. The study of religion and all religious externals were removed from them. The realization of this fact permits us to better understand how responsible and difficult are the tasks of Catholic learning in Poland. These tasks are an organic part of the Church's mission in Poland. One can look at the entirety of the mission, of this mission, from a number of different viewpoints. If we could fuse all these viewpoints into a whole, we would get a broad picture of the life of Catholic nation in this new and difficult segment of its history. Let the segment uh, Analyze, analyzed here by me in a less than a detailed fashion permit us to look at the entirety in at, at least some kind of measure. Thank you. Thank you, Cardinal Wojtyla, for your inspirational information and enlightenment about the health of the church in Poland. It's good to get a report that God is alive and well over there. Before we come to the closing of this, I just had a few things handed to me. Some more people in the audience. We have Mrs. and Dr. Justice Paul, Chairman of the History Department here at the University. Wherever you are. I don't know before if I announced uh, Dr. Woodka. Did I announce him before? No. Dean of the College of Letters and Sciences. And we have um, Mr. and uh, Mrs. Leonard Petrusky, who have uh, worked quite a bit with the organization of this uh, get-together. We have a round of applause for them. At this time, too, I mentioned earlier that there were many people responsible for the planning of this event, and names cannot be given because of the shortness of time. However, at this time, I would like all of those people, and I only met them a week ago, probably just uh, a handful of them who were in the planning and preparation of this occasion, the, the people who had to sell tickets, those who had to um, get in contact with uh, various building people to get facilities to accommodate our crowd, and those who helped in any way. If you would all stand up, please, just to give this audience a, a view of how many people work to put this on for you. They're all bashful. Trees, Grace. You know. Okay, before uh, the benediction, a uh, few closing remarks I have is that 
they hinge on the importance of religion. It is said that most of us don't know how bad off we would be if it were not for religion. We should be like the little boy who was saying his prayers and concluded, God bless mommy, daddy, sister, brother, grandma, grandpa, Auntie Emma, and Uncle John. And please, God, take care of yourself, or else we're all sunk. <laughs> It has been my pleasure to be with you this evening, and there is just uh, one announcement to be made about the Mass uh, at uh, Spash. We are asked to use the west side parking lot. West. At this time, then, I will call upon Father Mieczkowski to deliver the benediction. Father Steve. Almighty and merciful God, in whose benevolent hands lie the destinies of nations and men, we suppliantly yet confidently invoke thy divine blessing upon this assemblage of God-fearing and humanity-loving men and women from many walks of life. We thank your heavenly Master for the countless favors and blessings bestowed upon us in the past, and particularly the cherished privilege extended to us on this day to attend and participate in the convocation, reception, and banquet in honor of His Eminence, Cardinal Karl Wojtyla, Archbishop of Krakow, Poland, and especially to be present and participate in the sublime liturgy of the sacrifice of the Mass, oftentimes called Eucharistic celebration, to be enacted this evening by His Eminence in the auditorium of Stevens Point Area High School. All of us deeply appreciate the great honor we are enjoying because of the visit of a cardinal from Europe. Unfortunately, gen genuine gratitude cannot be expressed in a simple few words. We entreat the Lord of infinite power and goodness to bless and bless abundantly His Eminence, Cardinal Wojtyla, now and in the days to come. Bless, too, in no lesser measure, His Excellency Bishop Fracking of La Crosse, the committee members, the distinguished guests, the venerable sisters, the venerable brothers, the reverend clergy in attendance and participation, the speakers, the officers and officials at all levels and in all categories, the personnel involved in transportation, accommodations and communications, the directors, supervisors and performers in any capacity, the musicians and singers at all functions, the members of food staff and service in all localities, the many, many participants and attendants who are contributing so much to the gratifying success of this outstanding event, which every one of us will never forget. We certainly wish to apologize for any omissions and assure you that said omissions, if any, are entirely unintentional. Now, with your gracious indulgence, ladies and gentlemen, let us digress for a moment from our local situation. Our distinguished Cardinal Wojtyla is scheduled to depart for his country, Poland, tomorrow. We sincerely wish him bon voyage and happy landing. However, if it is within the prerogatives of your benediction, homilist, it would be my distinct honor to extend an invitation to His Eminence Cardinal Wojtyla to return to our great community for another visit in not too distant future. But today, it is an earnest, our earnest hope and fervent prayer that he would come as a representative 
of a free country and a free people. Whatever the future holds for us, that great, for that great cause, we do not know today. We word you and I appeal to you and plead with you, dear friends, to pledge his eminence, your support for God's plan for every nation and for all peoples. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon us today and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>